Hey guys, today's video is about how to organize your papers for school. In the first portion of the video, I will go over a couple of different methods you can use to organize your papers and give some pros and cons for each one to help you decide which one would work best for you. And then in the second half of the video, I'll give some more general tips about organizing your papers for school. So let's start out with the different organizational methods. I don't think there's one perfect method that will work for every single person to make you perfectly organized, but these are a couple of different options with pros and cons so that you can weigh them and see what you think would work best for your personality and organizing style. And if that doesn't work, try something else. Try as much as you want and figure out what works best for you. Method number one is having a binder for every single subject. Within the binder, you can use binder dividers to further divide the binder either by the unit or chapter or by the type of paper like notes, handouts, reference sheets, worksheets, etc. The positive side of this is that it's super organized since everything is divided a lot and then you can further divide as much as you want. However, having one binder for every subject can get pretty bulky, especially if you carry everything with you in your backpack. And it's hard to maintain a binder since you need a three hole punch and you have to punch holes in all of your paper. And it can be pretty tempting to just stick things in the pockets. I know that's a problem that I have instead of actually putting them where they need to go within the divider system. A second option is to have one giant binder for all of your subjects and use dividers in that binder to further divide by the subject and potentially by the divisions that I mentioned earlier. The good thing about this is that everything is pretty easy to find. It's all in one binder and you can divide it into a lot of different subcategories just like a smaller binder. The problem with this is similar to the single subject binders. You have to go through that effort barrier of maintaining a three ring binder and this binder is going to be huge. I have one of these, it's a two inch binder and it's overflowing. Option number three is having folders for each subject. These can be two pocket folders that stand alone or you can use a manila folder potentially within a hanging file system. The positive side of this is it's really simple and compact since it's just a folder and it's really easy to maintain since all you have to do is put things inside the folder. One negative side of using folders is that since they're all pretty small and they're all separate, you can lose track of one folder and just lose all of your papers. The other downside is that it's kind of hard to find things since you can't really make further divisions within a folder. It's just one big chunk of papers. If you have a folder with two pockets or an even fancier folder with multiple pockets, then make sure to use those strategically to separate your papers into whatever method works best for you. The last method I want to mention, which is what I personally use to carry my papers to school with me each day, is an expanding file folder. The pros of the system are similar to those of having single folders. It's very compact and it's easy to maintain since you just put things in. Also, you don't have that possibility of losing one folder since all of the sections are combined together into one larger unit. However, it can be difficult to find certain papers within the subjects since you can't further divide it like you can in a binder and everything is put in horizontally so you have to shuffle through them. So those are four different organizational methods you can use and now I will give you six different organizational tips that might help you out in keeping organized. Tip number one is to separate your papers by things I need to take to school with me each day and things that I can leave at home. The way to decide what to keep at home and what to take with you really depends on your class and circumstances. The way that I do it is each time we move on to a new unit, I'll take everything from the past unit and put it into the section of things that I keep at home. And anything that's for the current unit will go to school with me each day. This will help keep your backpack lighter and you won't have a binder or folder that is absolutely bursting at the seams. You can also use different methods for these two categories. For example, as I mentioned, I use an expanding file folder for the items that I take to school with me each day. And then I use a giant binder for all of the papers that I keep at home. Tip number two is to put all of your papers in some sort of chronological order, whether that means putting all of the newest papers in the front or putting all of the newest papers in the back. This way, even if you don't have subdivisions, like I mentioned in the small separate binders section of the video, you can still have a general idea of 
where something might be based on the time frame when you used it or made it. As a sub tip to help you keep things in chronological order, make sure you put the date on everything. Chronological order does work best for things that follow some sort of sequence like notes or review sheets or study guides. Tip number three can be for things that are more reference based. Instead of doing chronological order, you can use this method that is similar to how random access memory for a computer works. Whenever you take something out to refer to it, when you put it back, put it back on the top. This ensures that the papers that you use the most frequently will be close to the top and therefore easier to access. Tip number four, this is kind of obvious and should go without saying, but it is kind of hard to actually do this. And that is to put things in the right spot immediately after you get them or use them. If not immediately, at least as soon as possible. A tip from the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up that can help with this is to store things in a way that makes it as easy as possible to put them away. Because the really the hardest part of staying organized is not necessarily taking things out, but putting them away again in the right spot. Tip number five is to color code. Like all of these tips, this is not necessarily for everyone. I personally don't follow a strict color code, but it is helpful to have a certain color assigned to each subject. Having all of your supplies for a certain subject, like your binder tab or your notebook or your folder, all in the same color will help you visually keep them together and therefore likely physically keep them together. Lastly, tip number six, use binder clips, paper clips, and other clippy type objects as often as possible. You can use them to create smaller subdivisions within a larger section. For example, in my giant binder, I use paper clips for each unit within the tab section for each subject. You can also use them to group together papers that are generally used together, such as all of the papers that are used for research for a certain project. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you'd like more organizational tips, I will have some linked on screen right now. I upload new videos every Monday, and my Tumblr and Instagram are both at StudyQuill if you want to check those out. See you next time!